church this morning, everyone, those of you that are with us and those of you who are joining us online on Facebook. We're glad you're here with us this morning, and uh, I think the weather's going to get better today. It was a little bit rainy this morning, but we can praise God even when it's raining outside, right? <laughs> All right. We're going to keep singing here. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for.
failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Well, good morning. You may be seated. Thank you, boy. <laughs> He said that I need to move up closer to the microphone. All right, so just a couple announcements here. First of all, if you're new, we have a contact sheet. We want to get to know you. Just fill that out and you could drop it off in the back or put in the offering. If you're a returning member and there's an update to your information, address, email, phone number, uh, please fill it out. We want to stay in touch with everybody. Second of all, we have these uh, green slips of paper that are our prayer cards. So if you got prayer requests or uh, something's going on in your life and you just want a lot of prayer, our staff loves to pray for people. So please fill that out and uh, get that turned in as well. Um, so um, altars are always open for prayer time. So if you have a prayer need or you want to lift somebody up in prayer, uh, or you just want to give praise to God. Uh, the altars are always open, and uh, I just want to say as a special prayer request, uh, most of you know my dad, uh, Frank Gill. He is in a situation right now where he has to find a new place to live by Wednesday. So please lift him up in prayer. And if you know any place that is offering rent or whatever uh, here in this area, Please let me know, and I can get that information to him. Otherwise, um, I'm going to say a prayer, and then our children can be dismissed for Children's Church. Uh, Heavenly Father, just thank you again for this beautiful day you created for us to enjoy. We thank you that we can come here and worship you as your body. And I pray, Lord, as we continue to worship you, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. And we love the fact that you are our Father. And we thank you for the mothers you have given us and the mother role models in our lives that are there that's to step in and be a mother to us. And we love you and we thank you also our Heavenly Father for loving and caring for us so much for sending your son. And in his name we pray, amen. All right, kiddos, off to Children's Church. Come now, King. Come now, precious Prince. 
face how great a debtor daily i am constrained to be let thy goodness like a wetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart lord take and seal it seal it for thy courts above here's my heart lord take and seal it seal it for thy courts above come thou fount come thou king come thou precious prince of peace hear your bride to you we sing come thou fount of our blessing come thou fount come thou king Come, thou precious Prince of Peace, hear your bride to you we sing. Come, thou fount of our blessing. Amen. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. How about you? Amen. Lift your hands. All right, awesome. We're going to sing about that this morning. Just let the Lord bless you as we're singing. Lift your hands and your hearts and your minds up to him. Just tell him how much we love him today. <laughs> No place I'd rest. 
Well, last week, Jan and I were on vacation. We got to go over to the coast and get a little bit of fresh sea air and just um, enjoy uh, kind of a, a relaxed schedule. So thanks for giving us that opportunity. Uh, grateful for uh, Pastor Debbie and uh, the message she talked about uh, the, the sense of honor and uh, uh, just openness to all the ministry of women that, that God gave uh, to women. It's a God-given right. And so this morning we're focusing in on mothers because, hey, it is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day. Amen. I'm glad to see all the mothers, and uh, I see a lot of you who are here to um, give some, some love and some honor to your mothers, and so we're, we're grateful to that. Um, but we have a, a treat for all the mothers on the back table as, as you leave, so uh, go by and, and uh, grab one of those and say um, thanks and then enjoy the rest of the day and celebrate each other and uh, just the, the wonderful things that our moms do for us. I want to start off with this video because it kind of captures the, the holistic picture of what it means to be a mother. I, I think um, almost all of you mothers and even some, um, a lot of non-mothers will find yourself in this video. For the moms who raised us up, gave us love and made us strong. For the praying moms who don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost, but never given up. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had. For the single moms who tirelessly and courageously learned how to do this on their own. For the stepmoms and the stand-in moms who rose to the occasion and loved us well. For the working moms, the stay-home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms. Thank you for teaching us how to walk, how to learn, and how to make a difference. For taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself. For comforting us when we felt alone and afraid. For lifting us up when others put us down. For the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties. For the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we want to say thank you. what we could never do for ourselves. We love you. We honor you. We remember you today. Happy Mother's Day.
I um, love the video and the way it kind of just reaches out and tries to catch uh, every phase of motherhood and every type of motherhood. I, I can identify with every one of those categories and people who, um, who have done a great job. And um, mothering at its best is a, is a hard job. And it's, it's not always at its best. It's usually not at its best. And before we go on, I just want to say I want to reach out and say uh, the compassion I have for people who had a, a biological beginning but never really had uh, the kind of mom that you would see reflected on that. Um, it, it's just a fact that uh, sometimes um, a mother doesn't have that ability to love or to nurture. And uh, we pray both for uh, mothers that are in that situation and also for the, the children that have to learn about God's love in an entirely different way. Well, um, I've preached Mother's Day messages many times. I don't always do that on Mother's Day, but I've done it many times. And it never occurred to me to actually think about what the word uh, honor means. I've looked at mothers and I've looked at things that mothers should do and reason why mothers are great and things that we should do for mothers. But I've never really done much study or thinking about what does that word honor mean? It says honor your mother. It doesn't say obey, although that's part of it. Um, it doesn't say love, although that's part of it. What does it mean when the Bible says honor your mother? Several times, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we're told to honor our fathers and our mothers. What does it mean when it says the word honor? And so I did some study and some research, and I found out that Giving honor is a big deal in the Bible. The, the Old Testament word that we get um, honor from is actually the word kabod, and the literal meaning is heavy. So I want you to turn to your mother next to you and say, you're heavy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> That's not what it means in the sense of heaviness. Um, but be before they had money that had the value printed on it, you know, five cents or ten cents or twenty dollars or thirty dollars, before they had money that had the price, how much um, a coin was was based on how heavy it was. And the, the heavier the coin was, the more value that it had. So when we're said, when we say that a mother is heavy or that God is heavy or that the king is heavy, what he means is, they're heavy in significance. They're heavy in value. They are um, something of great value. To honor someone is to treat them as if they are valuable. And to single out parents for honor means that we treat parents of having the unique value and relationship and significance in our lives that they do. Your, your parents, your father and your mother, they're not just another contact in your iPhone. They're your mother. They're your father, and they have a unique role that no one else has had in your life, for, for better, for worse, and hope, hopefully and preferably more for better than for worse. So that's the Old Testament word. Kabod means heavy. It means recognizing the incredible significance and value and um, um, help that we've had from the person that's our mother or our father. The New Testament has a different word. It's a Greek word. It's tamao. Uh, which means treating people according to their position, in light of the position that they have. And I think, it, you know, in sports, we think about this. You treat your coach, your basketball coach, you, keep, you treat your basketball coach a whole lot different than you treat your teammates because they have a different relationship and they have a different responsibility. And so you treat them in a different way. And our, our parents, we have a unique relationship with them and the way that we treat them should be in accordance with that relationship and the responsibility they've had. The, the Bible treats our responsibility to our uh, parents as unique. Um, one of the very few commands in all the Bible that says why it's given. Mostly it's just, you know, do this, do that, don't do that, don't do that. And we have to kind of figure out, you know, why, what is the value, and we don't always know the why, but... Um, one of the very few times that the Bible says, here's the reason I'm giving this commandment, is in the Ten Commandments, the Fifth Commandment, that says, honor your father and mother, that it might go well with you. That then God will give you a long and full life in the land the Lord your God is giving to you. Exodus 20, verse 12. 
And so this unique thing in the sense that God gives this promise, and it's, it's a pretty big promise. Um, the implication is if you honor your parents, you're going to have a long and good life. And if you don't honor your parents, maybe not so much. The last thing I wondered about was uh, who gets on, right? I think it's about 60, 70 times that the Bible uses the word honor. And I went through and I, I read them all uh, this week. And, and I noticed some things that kind of popped out to me. Most of the times, of course, that we are told to honor, we're told um, to honor God. We give God the honor because he's the heaviest, right? He's the most important. He's the most valuable. And so we honor God and we give him the honor that's due to who he is. God is the creator. He's the beginner and he's the end of life. Uh, he's what holds life together. Uh, he gave us physical life. Then Jesus comes in and through the Holy Spirit gives us eternal life. And so we treat them with the honor and the respect and the unique relationship that we have with them. So most of the time the Bible talks about honor. It's, it's giving honor to God. Interesting, a couple of times it said, you know, God would honor those that follow him. If you honor God, God will honor you. It's reciprocal. That as we give God the honor that he's due, that he tends to share that honor with us. And then we're told to honor other people. Sometimes we just honor everyone. Uh, the New Testament says you honor one another above yourself. Uh, be zealous, be delightful in giving honor to each other. And often, in the Old Testament especially, we're to honor the king. That uh, we're called as uh, believers and followers of the Lord, uh, that we are good citizens and that we respect the, the civil authorities. We're to honor the king. And then finally, we give special honor to our parents. And one of the interesting stories, I think it's in 1 Kings uh, chapter 1 or chapter 2, it's the story of Solomon. And uh, Solomon has waited all his life to, to be the king. And uh, one day he finds out, due to a very sad impact on his father, of course, you know, his father's passed away, so he's not going to become king. And so he goes into the throne room and... Um, all the people that are there to recognize that he's going to be the new king. They say, you know, long live uh, King Solomon. He sits down on his throne and he starts acting as king. And he's the one that will get that heaviness and the one that gets that respect. And everyone will honor him. And people come by one after the other and they honor him. And then it says, after this had gone on for two or three hours in the morning, his mother comes in. And things change. They flip. They turn upside down. When his mother comes in, uh, Solomon gets off the throne, he goes down, and he bows before his mother, and he gives her honor. Now, if there's a wonderful picture about the fact that there is a unique honor that we give um, to our mother, I think it's in that picture. He humbled himself, and he said, you know, mother, whatever I can do for you, I will do. Unfortunately, she asks a question he can't give to her, but he honors her in the request and he treats her with the respect that she is due because she is his mother. Um, so honor in, in the Bible. Um, several ways in which we can look at what it means to honor our mothers. Uh, first of all is we honor our mothers when we obey them. And this is especially for uh, children who are still in the home. Uh, but Ephesians 6 one through three is one of the very many times that the New Testament uh, talks about uh, what it means to honor your parents. The Old Testament just says honor your parents, honor your parents, and the expectation is you know what this means, so do it. The New Testament, there's several uh, ways in which we're told how. Uh, there's commentary, there's reflection. What, if it, what does it mean actually to honor your parents? And so in Ephesians 6, 1, we're told children obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. And then it quotes from the fifth commandment. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. And so the, the first New Testament expansion of what it means to honor your mother says, you know, Honoring your fathers and mothers, that involves obedience. Doing the things they say to do, even though it doesn't make sense to you. 
You know, someone told me that well, I'm going to, I'm only going to obey my parents if I understand them. I go, well, that's not obeying your parents, that's understanding them. You know, o- obeying parents um, uh, implicitly means, it, it, it expects, it assumes that obeying parents means that you're going to do things that your parents ask you to do, even though you don't fully understand the reason why. We hear a lot today, by the way, um, about how in the, the time of the, the Bible, when the Bible was written, the Old Testament time in the first century A.D., that it was very much a male-oriented society. Males ruled everything, and women were nothing, which is a little bit true, but also an exaggeration. Because we find here in this Old Testament commandment that goes back to at least a thousand years before Christ, and probably more than that, and is reiterated several times in the New Testament, we find that every time it talks about honoring or obeying parents, it goes to great efforts to say both the father and the mother. The father and mother are a parenting team, and children are to honor, they're to obey the mother as well as the father. And how that works out may be a little bit different from family, but but the biblical injunction is um, we honor our father and our mother, and one of the ways that we do that is by obeying them. Obeying parents, it says it gives us a long life. It doesn't really expand all that, but, but uh, those of us who are parents have started to figure out, oh, wait a minute, there are some things I didn't understand, but mom and dad did understand, and I thought it was safe, and they knew it was dangerous. And at the times when I did what my parents said, I was saved from danger, and the times I didn't, I got into big trouble. And, and just to be honest, I think all of us have been in both categories, right? You know, there, there are times when I was smart enough and um, humble enough that when my parents said, don't do that, I, I didn't do that. And I, upon reflection, I go, my life is better because they guarded me, guided me away from danger and into a life that's satisfying. And then I can remember, you know, we'll go into all the details, but I can remember a couple of times that I just knew that mom and dad really weren't smart enough to be able to tell me not to do that. They were old-fashioned, and they were kind of slow, and they, you know, you know, they were old enough things were kind of slowing down in their brains, and they didn't really understand the modern age. And so I went out and did the thing that I knew was right, and they thought was not right. And, wow, within, within a day or two, I found out, oh, mom and dad weren't so dumb after all. One of the, the things that just shocked me was uh, how how much intelligence and wisdom my parents gained between the time I was 16 and the time I was 21. You know, in those five years, in my mind anyway, they about doubled in their wisdom. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to recognize, oh, there's consequences. It's not just whether a thing is fun, but there's consequences to the things. And that's what mom and dad understood. They understood the consequence. And they're trying to steer me from things that had a bad consequence and into doing those things that have a good consequence. And so um, we honor our mothers because they're trying to guide us in ways that will make our lives uh, happier and more fulfilled uh, in the future. So we honor our mothers. That's one way uh, we, we obey our mothers. That's one way that we honor them. Secondly, um, we honor them by making them proud because the opposite of honor is shame or embarrassment. You know, we can honor our mothers by making them proud, or we can dishonor them by doing things that embarrass them. We honor our mother when we do those things that add to their respect and to their reputation, make them want to tell stories about us, and we dishonor when we do those things that they want to keep secret. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 is an interesting um, section. I memorized this a long time ago because the first part of it and then I figured out what the second part was saying, too. Uh, and Colossians 2, 6, and 7 goes this way. Um, so then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. So the way that we live the Christian life is built on complete faith and complete obedience, just the way we become a Christian by saying it's Jesus and Jesus alone. I can't save a part of myself. I need Jesus for all my salvation. And it says, in the same way that we enter into faith, we continue to live by faith. 
just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, uh, rooted and built up in him. And then it says, strengthened in the faith which you were taught. Strengthened in the faith in which you were taught. And that, for some of you, the person that taught you how to uh, live the Christian life was a Christian friend or, or a Christian pastor or a, or a good Christian podcast, perhaps, these days. But for a lot of us, we were taught how to live the Christian life by our father and our mother. And uh, I'm, I'm in that category. Um, and so, you know, when I think about bringing honor to my parents. I don't, I don't want the things that I do to embarrass them. And they're both up in heaven now. I don't think they're going to turn red or be all embarrassed by the things that I do. But it's still um, a powerful and I think a helpful thought in my brain that I don't want to do things that would embarrass my parents. My father's been, been dead for 38 years, and yet almost every week I say, you know, in this situation, what, what, would, what would flow in the teaching, uh, Colossians 2.7, what would be the teaching that my dad gave me that would help me with instructions in that? Because my dad and my mom together were the influences that brought me to Christ. And if I want to stay firmly in Christ, probably I ought to stay firmly in the kind of teaching that they gave, unless it's clearly contrary to what um, God's Word says. I was visiting with one of our neighbors here around the church and asking them some, some tough questions, and they were working hard to give me the answers, and and, and I just love this. He said, you know, hey, halfway through the conversation, he, he, he said, wait a minute. He said, you know, um, my mother told me never to lie to a pastor. <laughs> I, I, I'd never heard that one before, but I, I think it's pretty good. By the way, don't you either. <laughs> just in case you didn't have that kind of mom, don't lie to your pastor. But that's what he said. He said, my mother told me never to lie to a pastor. And he said, that's one of the few things I've never done. And I'm not going to do it for you. So go ahead and you can ask the questions and you can know the answers I'm giving you. Because I don't want to embarrass my mother. I want to bring honor to my mother. And that was important to her and so it's important to me. And that made him not only, a, not only gave him extra bonus points with me, but I think as a citizen and just as a person, it made him a better person. We, we honor our mother and our father when we make a point of doing things that would bring them honor and uh, wouldn't embarrass or bring them to shame. But the, the biggest thing I want to share is this last one, and that is that we, we honor our mothers when we take care of her, when we take care of her. As I said, the Old Testament doesn't spell out what it actually means to, to honor our mother. There's probably some pictures, that, stories that tell, but but. The New Testament's pretty specific on a couple things, and one of them is Jesus. And Jesus talks about the command to honor your father and mother um, two or three times. And uh, the most in-depth time is really extended commentary, extended teaching on what it means to honor your mother and father it comes in uh, Matthew 15. Matthew 15. And so there were some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law, and they had arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. And as always, they're trying to get him to look stupid. And so they asked him, why do your disciples disobey our age-old tradition? See, not the Bible, but the age-old tradition. For they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before they eat. And Jesus replied, well, why do you, by your tradition, violate the direct commandments of God. For instance, not the only time, but for instance, here's one example. God says, honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father and mother must be put to death. Now, th there's a little bit extra power and spice, pepper coming out of the, the Old Testament. But you say, you say, it's okay for people to say to their parents, sorry, mom, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give to God what I might have otherwise given to help you out. In this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your tradition. And then he says, you hypocrites. There's one of the times when they were hypocrites. They knew what this Old Testament said, 
but they, they found some way, they found a loophole, okay? They found a loophole. The implication was honoring your mother meant that if she needed help, financial help in her older years, that you gave her the financial help that she needed. This was before Social Security or retirement funds. Uh, when the person stopped being able to generate their own income, the only way to survive that they had was that their kids took care of them. And, and so it was one of the obligations of a, of a child to take care of their parents if they outlived their ability to, to finance their own life. Um, so a couple of things about the story. Uh, the first thing is um, very clear at this point that the commandment to honor your parents is not given just to young children. It, it's a good one for parents to use on their children, you know, and if you haven't already memorized this as a, as a parent, you're, you're, you're behind the times. So you get with it and, and, and let your kids know, hey, you know, we went to church today and I found out I was supposed to tell you to obey me. But it's not just for children. In fact, when it was first given, it was given to all people that were 20 and older. And here, Jesus is talking about when it means to honor your parent, means for people who are in the middle part, the uh, income-generating part of life, that your older, aging parents, they need your help. And this command is a command that you help your aging parents. And so honoring parents is not just something that children do. It's not something, in other words, that when you turn 21 or 30, then all of a sudden you don't need to honor your mom anymore. You know, you never outgrow honoring your parents. In that sense of not bringing them shame or, you know, not doing things that embarrass them, I think it's a good um, good framework for life all the way until we go to meet the Lord long after our parents have. And so the honoring your mother, honoring your father, honoring your parents is for adults of all ages as well as for children. Uh, secondly, there's the warning about loopholes. Uh, you can look at any commandment of God and you can find a loophole. And if you can't find them on your own, just go to Facebook or Twitter or Twitch or whatever and you'll find plenty of people that are finding loopholes, you know, and I won't talk too much about the news of the week um, outside of to say that when I watch my Twitter and my Facebook, I find lots of people finding lots of loopholes. And the loopholes look pretty reasonable. But here's the problem about loopholes. When you've wiggled out of God's law, you've also wiggled out of God's protection. Okay, you don't do one without the other. When you've wiggled out of God's law, you've wiggled out of obedience to a place where God blesses you, and you've chosen to put yourself in a place where God can't bless you. You've wiggled yourself out of a place where God will protect you from the evil one to where you are very vulnerable to the evil one. So there are loopholes. Yes, there are loopholes. You can. I'm not saying that you should or that they're really legitimate. I'm just saying if you want to find a loophole, you will. If you want to find a loophole, you will, but don't go there. Because to wiggle out of God's law is to wiggle out of God's care and his protection. And finally, this is a strong message that adult children are to provide for the needs of their aging parents. Uh, and I, I know that a lot of you, when you read, oh, the pastor's going to talk about honoring mothers. I think, oh, you know, he's going to tell us that we need to bring flowers when we're in grade school to our 30-year-old moms. And I'm, I no longer have a 30-year-old mom. I'm 60 myself. Uh, but, but this is one that's good for, for most of us here. Um, provide for our aging parents. And I, I'm not saying this because I don't know of anyone in that church that's not. Actually, in just a minute, you'll find I'm so inspired because you are. Um, sometimes we provide financially um, as the passage. Or sometimes we, I know that some of you have provided for your mothers or your fathers by having them live with you the last four or five years of life. And it wasn't a check that you wrote to them, but you brought them into your house and you provided food for them and you provided um, all the housing that they needed. Uh, it's almost always emotionally. Maybe in today's world with uh, Social Security and Medicare and retirement plans, maybe uh, your father or your mother doesn't need so much financial support, but everyone needs emotional support. And the longer we go through life and the more our friends tend to... Uh, move into heaven ahead of us and things turn to get hard to navigate and hard to understand and the world changes so much the emotional support that we get from our children becomes especially valuable and especially necessary 
No one, a lot of people can provide for themselves financially. No one can provide for themselves the comfort that comes from the presence of others. No one can provide the comfort that they need from the presence of others. And so to, to spend time, and um, uh, I, I enjoy you know, going to uh, senior citizen housing, all, all levels, um, all, all levels of care, uh, and, uh, and just visiting with people who are there. And it's interesting, such a dramatic change. There's people that you'll walk into their rooms or the little part, and you find that, and they're just telling these stories about all, all the times this week that their kids have come by. And maybe, and often while I'm there, you know, a kid does come by and it interrupts the discussion. And then, those are the times I just, I love being with those people and I love the sense that their family is honoring their mother. But I have to say, there's been times when even though I know that there's family within two or three miles, it looks like it's been three or four months since anyone from the family has come to visit. And my heart just goes out to people like that. I believe that our church has the uh, obligation, or at least the freedom and the responsibility to say, we're going to move in and we're going to provide what the family hasn't. And we don't know what's wrong with the family, why it's broken, what's not doing that. But um, in our older years, we need the presence of our family. Well, um, it's fun talking to you and hearing you just tell stories of, uh, of your mothers and of your fathers and of the time that you spend with them and the the money that you invest with them and the attention and, and helping them to get to doctor's appointments and, and um, all the other things and the ways that you celebrate um, birthdays and anniversaries and all of that. It's a great thing to be a, a pastor of a church of people in their 60s and 70s and even 80s that are still honoring their parents and they're doing it um, selfishly. They're giving it themselves and they're giving big chunks of themselves. And you didn't need to know, that is inspirational. That is And that movie, I thought, at the beginning of the little clip was inspirational. But you are inspirational as you are given of yourself sacrificially to honor your father and your mother. And so I wanted to close. Do I have First Corinthians up there? Yeah. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable in taking care of your aging parents. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Thank you for what you've done. Continue to do it. Draw upon God's power and God's strength and God's energy. Draw extra reserves of God's love and God's honor when you need to. And I think at that point, I'm just going to step aside and we're going to have the worship team come up. Because I like the old Spanish proverb, an ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy. So I'll let you back to your house of mother, and we'll go ahead and close out our worship service with some good singing. Thanks so much.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Hey everyone. Thank you for joining us today. For those who are on Facebook, thank you for joining us as well. For anyone who would like to give, we have the offering today and everybody will be coming forward with our ushers. For those who are online, we have the option of donating through snail mail, the donate button online, or you can directly come into the office and donate. And we're gonna go ahead and pray over our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this week. Thank you for your protection and your blessings. We pray over our offering. We just ask that it glorify you. We ask that it's just amplified and that the money is um, doubled and that it is, brings glory to our church. We thank you so much for everyone who gives, Heavenly Father, and thank you for putting on their heart to give. We thank you so much for mothers on this day that we get to celebrate moms. We thank you so much for all that the moms do for us, and we just want to honor them and care for them. We thank you for everything that you do, for the blessings that you pour out for us, and we give you worship and praise. And we thank you for everything. In your mighty name we pray, amen. We also want to re just um, remind everybody that there's home churches coming up on May 22nd. The sign-up sheets are at the Welcome Center, and the contact is Debbie Powell. Thank you. All right, we're going to finish this Sunday service with a fun song here as we go out today and share God's love with everyone that we know as we go out and uh, go tell it on the mountain, huh? <laughs>
this is more.